Okay. So just call to this number or uh, text in WhatsApp as well. Okay, so today we will start our actual session. Okay, so environment also is ready now. We will go into the step step by step. So in Hadoop, hope you know what is Hadoop, right? Does anybody doesn't have any idea? I don't like to boring the people so that. Anybody doesn't have any idea, just tell me. How to, and if you have more idea, just to share your thought as well. So always our session is going to be interactive. So whenever it's required, you can unmute and ask your questions, whatever it is. So anybody have uh, doesn't knowledge or doesn't know what is Hadoop, what is the tool with this tool, the basics. I will be go with the commands in practical. I don't like to disturb because a few of them is going to be studying the theory part as well, right? So it'll be. Okay, I just give you the basics overview and directly we'll go with that actual practical topics. So Hadoop is a kind of distributed uh, environment tool, which is helped to handle our data in file basis. Everything we are going to store in the big data platform as a file basis, which is easily distributed to multiple nodes and we can access the data based on the replications as well. These are all the features that are available. Efficiently, we can handle the data. And uh, this data, we can replicate it into multiple places, right? That all, that all will be keep on monitored by the Hadoop architectures. So we will be going to discuss that in detail in some time. So those are basics for overview. Hadoop completely will be helping on only for integration basis to handle the data with multiple nodes. At the beginning 2004, it was introduced based on Hadoop concepts. So the big data based, what is that? Uh, Google architecture basis concept, and they'll be interested in the open source and Apache license. Okay, after 2006 and uh, 2008, Hadoop 2x version was introduced. Hadoop 1x and 2x, there is a small difference is available. SDFS version one, everything will go with single point of failure. So only name node can handle all the operations. So it's a kind of spoke, single point of failure that is going to be happen and Hadoop 1x version. So people will be struggle whenever the doubt, the system goes down, they cannot handle it. So they will not be maintaining anything with high availability. Okay. And the third one thing is mostly suppose single point of contact is a single point of failure, no high availability, business impact. Limited nodes. Okay, so we cannot handle more multiple nodes here. So number of data nodes is they have restricted. So almost uh, ten thousand or five thousand something only they can add it. So we cannot add it more on that. And no standalone to maintain it in case of any failures has happened continuously. And name node is getting more burden. Name node is nothing but it's a master node. It's just controlling all your other operations. It's getting more burden. Okay, this is the reason for how to move you it was happening. Once it, they have identified what all the issues is available, they will be finding the alternative and go with SDFS V2. So SDFS V2 is nothing but two expression. This is a one expression and maybe provide V1X and two X. 
In two expressions, what they have done, they will uh, continue, sorry, keep on monitor and overcome what are the failures they are handling with SDFS 1X and they will be planning to solve with with two expressions. So kind of yarn introduction is introduced. Mm. Okay, yarn, uh, we will discuss what is yarn in some time. Just giving you the basic overview. Yarn can control all the jobs related and resource related operations. So it was introduced in Hadoop 2X and the multiple tool integration. Okay, that this also has happened. So multiple tool is nothing but high spark and uh, at the time scope is uh, scope available and the pig is available. So this kind of tools, they are synced with directly in our HDFS 2X. But in Hadoop 1X, they are only handling with only MapReduce programs. Because everything they have to return the code with it by Java and they have to integrate it. So this is a bit complex, they cannot handle it. But in 2X, they have overcome with multiple two things. So it's a kind of SQL query, query basis, multiple programming basis, and the SQL concept basis, command line basis, they have been introduced. Yes, Ashish, any questions? Uh, so in version one, uh, the name node was getting burdened because it had to do the task of yarn as well. Am I right? Yeah, it was taking the responsibility yarn task. Uh, the one X, there is no concept is called a yarn. Two X only they have introduced. So name node will taking the metadata management as well as the data integrations with the jobs level as well as uh, failures and all. So task level failures, job level failures, and resource failures all will be taken care by name node. So it's getting more burden at the time. So it was uh, reduced into X. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But if I'm not wrong, the yarn will also be running on the master node, right? No, we can create a yarn in a separate node as well. Okay, okay. Because if so, yarn is also running on the master node, then uh, altogether it will be the same thing, right? Like everything on the single like exactly. Mm -hmm. So here they will be introducing the concepts for standalone, sorry, secondary nodes. So yes, and secondary name nodes, a standby name uh, node uh, with the high availability. Yeah, please. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. In version one, whether they use the map or not. Version one only they have MapReduce. We can handle our data only with the MapReduce programming. So okay. we cannot go more than that. If suppose I would like to integrate it with the Hive, I cannot do that. So okay. such kind of complex they have handled it. So two X only they have solved this kind of you know, things with multiple tools. It's called ecosystems. Okay. Sir. Okay. So what is what do you mean by ecosystem? Why we are calling Sun a solar ecosystem? Uh, I guess ecosystem is all systems which depend on each other. Like in this case, like everything will be dependent on HDFS. Like Hive is a data warehouse on the top of HDFS and Scoop is used for extraction into or from HDFS. So I guess that's why we call it ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. It depends with HDFS. So Hadoop platform, it's master required if you are going to handle the stores. Without Hadoop, this tool will not be what? That's the reason we are calling as ecosystems. So 2X only, they have introduced Hadoop ecosystem and the multiple tools they have designed like that one. But 1X, we don't have an ecosystem. We have only MapReduce. There are the references. Okay, understood. So Sundarraj and uh, other somebody is asking, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, these are the differences. Okay, what else? Yeah, second name node with high availability has introduced into X and you can create multi nodes as you wish. And it's keep on controlled by Eon, as I already informed. Inside Eon, we have a two uh, uh, demons is available. So that demons name is called resource manager and uh, what is that? Node managers. Okay, so node manager. So resource manager, I'll uh, in name node in the Hadoop 1X, they are calling the same name as a job tracker. And this is a task tracker. The people will be confused. Nowadays, nobody's using this word, job tracker. I just mentioning the short name. And node manager, they are calling as a task tracker. 
Okay, this is for one next question. Nowadays, everybody is using only with the resource manager and node manager. Just keep on monitor and understand these two keywords for me. Okay, we are going to see this in practical some time, but even though I just like to give some information in this. So, any question till now? Okay, great then. Oh, then I will go to the next two things. So how do one X and two X differences we just discussed? Anything I missed out? If there is some yarns, I already yeah. There's a mostly suppose anybody is asking the difference between one X and two X. There's a difference. And the three X also is available. I would like to share some more information. So how do three X recently introduced almost to one year around two years back, one and a half year or two years back? I cannot remember exactly. So Hadoop 3x, they will be identify what are all the drawbacks in Hadoop 2x and they are trying to solve it. So in Hadoop 2x, they are maintaining the data with only 3x replication. So data size is very huge. They have to handle it. Example, if suppose I'm going to store 1GB data, I want to replicate it to three places. So it must be, I have to space, send the, sorry, use the space with the 3x level. So 3GB, I need to spend for even 1GB of data. Also, the blocks inside all the data is going to be stored based on the blocks by default 128 MB. And that is also one of the difference in the default block size 64 MB. Here they have increased into 128 MB. Okay, so the default block size is going to be split up and store all the data, right? At the time, it will be creating a number of uh, replication details, and that is also going to be holding memory more. And name not only can manage in the metadata management, that is holding more information. That's a, one of the drawbacks that people are thinking, because why I need to spend 1 GB of data to 3 GB? Storage wise, I'm losing, right? So they have thinking about it. So what they have done it in 3X, they, uh, they introduced the concept is called Erasure Encoding. So errors are encoding to avoid the replication and it will be maintaining with the 1.5x uh, replications. Uh, instead of 3x replication, they are maintaining only 1.5x, which means 1GB data, if you're going to store, you are going to spend only 1.5GB because you need a replication. If, if, if replication is not available, you are going to lose your data. That's going to be happen, right? In the common. So we need to replicate somewhere. So this replication in a Hadoop 3x, they are using the concept is called Arazor encoding based on the data will be stored in somewhere and with a compressed format. Whenever the failures happen, the data will not be using it. Other time, this data is immediately decompressed, sorry, uncompressed and stored into the multiple places. So here we'll be burning, so we'll be wasting only that half of the storage spaces. Instead of 2x level, we will be spending only 0.5 level storage space uh, uh, replications. Those are the common criteria. Also, here we will be adding n number of. Uh, okay, say all limits for SNN. So, secondary name node, if you want to create a number of secondary name node, you can add it. In 2x, only one you can add it. More than that, you cannot do it. So one of them is a standby, another one is a passive room. Maximum two, you can add it in add it to it. But in Hadoop 3x, you can introduce and you can use a number of them as you wish. This is the one more advantage in Hadoop 3x is available. And some commands they have added based on some uh, user experience basis, they have added some commands. Okay, there is a difference between all three platforms. Any question? I was just wondering, like, why did they increase the block size? Like, what's the motive behind increasing the default block size? Uh, the reason began if you are going to store each block data, you have to keep on maintaining that information. Example, I'm going to store the data split up into uh, six part or 10 parts. I want to maintain where the data is stored, which data node is going to be stored, that all the information I have to store, keep on maintaining. If suppose I'm going to increase it, that is going to be reduced, right? Example, one GB of data, if you're going to divide by four, what will happen? You want to keep on monitor where, where the places that I have stored this four data, when I am going to sync with that. Instead of four, I'm going to reduce into two, what will happen? I cannot maintaining all the information right in my memory. Same like yeah. 64, <laughs> 60, yeah, please go ahead. No, I was just saying, like, I understood, like, you have to then maintain data for less number of blocks if you divide it yeah. into lesser blocks. Yeah, metadata will be reduced, reduced. 
and yeah, and you cannot go memory. and you cannot go lesser than the default block size, right? Like in Hadoop two X, I can't define block size of less than one twenty twenty, right? If required, we can do it via command. So okay. I will show you in the command. Don't worry. Okay, okay, okay. So while inserting the data, I would like to increase my replications as well as I can mention what is the number I have to maintain that information also. I can write it from there. So that's possible. Default, by default, when I went inside without you know, informing anything, automatically this data is ready to store like that one. That's the difference. Got it? Understood. So while we are going to discuss with the replication topics, right? At the time, I will go with a little detail manner. And if we have some demons, it's about almost 20 demons concept we are going to discuss. Uh, demons are services, whatever it is. So at the time, I will go in big detail. I don't like to boring you. So this is basic level I'm discussing right now. So in certain few minutes, we'll be entering to that particular topic. Got it? Yeah. Okay. What else I'm saying? Okay, so this is the one x, two x, and three x that I are uh, in, informations. Mm, hope I don't miss anything. Very important topic. Okay, fine. So then I will go to the storage layer. So in handling the data in big data platform Hadoop and Brahma, there is a two layers is available. So one is called a storage layer. Dinesh, what will be the default block size for Hadoop 3x? That is also default 128. They will not be increasing more, more than 128. The default is 128 only. Okay. That is suitable and is easily can handle the data. We have memory spaces, right? So this size is based on your memory, RAM memory basis. So minimum node they have to create with one GP. So one GP can capable to handle the data with quick efficient manner also. So they would like to suggest to go with 128 default with all the places. So they don't change anything with the 3x, default 128 itself, they are using it. Got it? Yes, Tanish. Okay, so next layers. So Hadoop, um, two layers is available. One is storage, another one is processing. So this storage layer, we are completely following with SDFS, which is called Hadoop Distributed File System. So all the commands we are going to use with the SDFS only. So this is, we are going to handle via command basis. Command line basis, we can handle it. Our REST API is available. Our favorite HDFS. The three places you can handle your these things. Okay. So another one is processing layer. This is help to how you are going to store the data, how you are going to handle that particular data inside to SDFS environment. That's the use of storage layers. Another one is processing layer. Processing layer, in the name itself, you can understand. It helps to processing your data. This is, we will be completely going with ecosystems. So already I informed you, right? Like a high use park, uh, whatever. Yeah, scope, peg, and Kafka. Lot of tools we have introduced that all will help to do the processing layer integration. So ecosystem, all ecosystem help for processing related mostly. Okay, and uh, what else? The yeah, processing layer. This is the integration we are doing it. One of the point I missed. Okay, I cannot remember. So if I can actually comes to my mind immediately, I forget. So I'll let you know. So this processing layer, layer we are going to study as a programming basis, as well as our SQL basis, constant basis. The command line we are going to work with our SDFS command basis. So there's two differences we are going to discuss with the practically, and we'll go with the demons concept, how the demons is begin, all the information we will be going to work together and understand that as. Okay, next, demons. Some places they are calling us a demons. It's a jargon name, actually. Some places they are calling us a services. So internal HDF for services, what else is available? How Hadoop is working? That architecture we are calling us a demons or services. So before starting this uh, demon services, we will just go with the basic architecture and we'll compare it.
Okay, so this is the layer of Hadoop architecture. Like this one is, it's going to happen. So this layer, first name is called a name node. It's a master node. Just keep on monitor all the information. Okay, and this one is called as a data nodes. So data node is actually holding the data, name node just having the metadata information. If suppose I'm going to store my data inside to the Hadoop environment, the data is going to be stored only with uh, data nodes one, two, three, four, five. I just create with the PyNode cluster. For example, this is. Okay. So this is completely following with metadata management. Okay, so then I'm not confused. So if any case of failure name node has happened, we cannot retrieve the data from our data nodes. That's the reason we are introducing one more node is called a secondary name node or standby name node. Let's keep on in sync with your system. Okay, something I just mentioned this well. So both will be sync as well as all the node will be something like this. All the command can provide only from name node based on the name node, data node is going to be picking. Okay, so name node can keep on monitor all the information with the data node and fetching that data block details. Block details means if suppose I'm going to store a one GB of data or whatever on abc.txt, where this abc.txt will be actually loaded. So some places this data will be loaded in data node one, the few blocks will be stored in data node three and data node five. All the information keep on monitor with your name nodes. Okay, and uh, this is a data metadata management only name node is taking care. One more node is called yarn. He is controlling all your jobs. So resource manager, right? Resource manager, he just control it. And then maybe I will provide it here itself. Okay. okay, so name node have all the information and the data node is ready. Whenever the request is comes to the name node as a client, I'm going to request to read some data. I have to say a request from here one day. For example, I want to read some data from our SDFS based on MapReduce program and ecosystem basis. So the processing request will come from the client. So this request, once it is reached into the name node, name node can understand where the data is actually located. That is the will be fetched. And it just provides all the information with your YAN. Okay. Yarn can calculate how much total resources available for this particular job, how much I can allocate. All the information can monitor by your yarn only and submit the jobs as inside into each data node. Each data node have own some RAM and memory, sorry, core is available. That's based on that yarn is going to be submit the job here. So inside to this each job, it's going to be created. Here it's created as a jobs. This job have multiple data. So this multiple data, they are going to create as a task because one of the tasks is going to be work with the data node one, one of the tasks is going to be work with data node three, one of the tasks is going to be work with data node two. All the information can monitor with the single job. So single job have multiple tasks, that multiple task is going to be run in the uh, process with your uh, data nodes only. So this task can be controlled by node managers. 
Okay, so node manager one as well as node manager two, like that multiple node managers are available. Each data node have own node managers. So like that, you can consider REST two as well. Okay, maybe I will provide. Okay, inside to this node manager, this node manager can control each data node core and RAM. Okay, so it doesn't sync with other data node, other data nodes. Only node manager one can control data node one core and RAM only. So the RAM controls they will be maintaining with the container buses. They will be creating a simple container inside to the uh, this environment, and they will be allocating some memory spaces to this container and run the job. Okay, sorry, run the task. And uh, course, they are going to handle with uh, application masters. So container only memory or it is processing you need for? Which one? Container represent uh, memory only or processing unit also? Processing unit can control by application master. It just containers nothing but resource spaces. Example, I'm going to handle with the 10 GPF data. 10 GB, out of 10 GB, 2 GB of data is holding with data node 1. This 2 GB, I want to process this multiple task, right? This task has to introduce in name node, node manager 1. And this task, while it's going to be started, it needs some reserve memory. So 2 GB of data I want to process. So just allocate 2 GB of container as a reserve memory spaces. Inside to this resource memory only, application master is going to be handled with core and they complete the process and provide the final output back to your job. This is happening. Okay, so container just for memory basis, application master is based on core basis. How much processing core is available, that's going to be handled. Understood? Yeah, means processing core is a pro means processor itself, cap core capacity, right? So hmm. one, unit, one unit of the resource will be container plus uh, processing unit core or something. How we can define that? What do you mean by unit here? Unit means the single uh, one core and uh, some capacity of RAM. We cannot mention unit here because uh, here we are calling as a task basis. Okay. This particular task, how much resources are required? Based on that, okay. we can allocate. Okay, because example, 2 GB of uh, databases, the blocks are stored in data node one. I want to create the container based on the 2 GB integrations, right? Otherwise, if suppose out of, uh, let's consider data node one have 8 GB memory and the four cores are available. Already I submit one of the job, it is completely holding that memory. Once that particular job is over, really I, that memory has to be released and other uh, job is going to start that particular task, right? So in this cases, I cannot handle the data in data node one. So Yarn can consider and keep on waiting for some time. If suppose the data is not released, that memory is not released, Yarn can decide and inform to the resource manager, this task is not suitable because data node one already working with other jobs with a particular task. So you just allocate this task to some other node. Like that based on some retry attempts. So by default four retry attempts is available. Based on it will be suggested to other nodes as well. So the same data we will be replicated into other places. Am I right? So that particular data based replication, the data will be replicated to other nodes as well. So that the particular job is going to be start based on utilizations. Each node will provide how much utilization is using as of now. 100%, 80%, 90%, all the information keep on monitored by your YAR. So that's called a block report. We will be discussing sometime. So based on that, resource can take the decision which node having more work, which node having less work. Based on that, just distribute and provide that information to other nodes as well. This is happening in the back. Got it? Yeah, okay. Any question, guys? Uh, how SN, SN, SNN is uh, uh, communicating with the name board? Whenever it goes down, at the time it's just going to be discussed. Okay. Otherwise, mostly it won't uh, disturb with our name node. So it just keep on backup all the metadata information based on some frequency intervals. Okay, but it won't disturb. Here also, it's just maintaining the metadata management only. There is no differences. Here also metadata, but if this is action memory basis, it's just holding it. This is completely following with uh, disk basis. 
So that is a concept is called FI, FS image. So based on the FS image, it just immediately replicate the data into the memory and start the process whenever name node goes down. If name node doesn't go down, then so standby name node just keep on listening. Um, it's a kind of subordinate, that's it. So okay. it's a superior, it's a subordinate. Whenever it just goes down, other time only, secondary name node will be taking the in-charge as a name node and keep on monitoring all the process. So once secondary name node will be promoted to the name node, actual primary name node, then this is going to be get the, all the responsibility from yarn and data node everything together. Okay. 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 We'll go with some basic examples with the, some programming as uh, with the MapReduce as of now. I'd like to I don't like to waste uh, more with the MapReduce program. Nobody's using it, but I would like to share something. Okay, I will Somewhere I just hold up that information. Okay, 29th. Okay, high spot. Okay, so it's here. Okay, here it may be stored. That's the information. Okay, that's the information. You know, one day one doesn't have that information. Some sample promo jobs is available. Matter is how it is because that basic understanding you will get. So just a basic program. Don't compare and don't think much about this one. How MapReduce program is works, how the job is going to be submitted. Okay. So this is a Hadoop jar command we have to use to submit our MapReduce job, but nobody is using to be frank. I'm saying don't waste your time in this, but I would like to show some examples with the previous. We'll be go with everything in practical with the ecosystem basis. But before entering enter with the Hadoop one or two A's, everybody is go with Hadoop job commands only. So all the jobs will be submitted via this way. Let me going to submit this job with some sample jobs is available. So maps and uh, number of map and reduce I just provide. So it's just going to start the flow here. Okay, so job is submit and it is in running state now. You can see this one. Once it is submit, this job has created with our map reduce and it is running it. Just two minutes, guys. This is very, very important. Otherwise, it goes down, right? So I cannot show all the information immediately. You can see the job information inside this job. Total reduce, no total maps is available. This is the number of task information. So mapper task as well as the reducer task. So inside map reduce, it will be split into map and reducer. So 200 mapper task is running and one reducer task is running. This information, keep on monitoring. This many tasks has introduced. This task, how much everything is completed right now. Maybe I would show with some notes as well, if possible. You can see this particular data node one, two, three. This three nodes has rising the containers. One container, two container, two containers created. This container will be allocating some memory, and uh, this much total memory is available. Just allocate this much. Everything is happening here, all right? So you can see, map for twenty one percent, twenty two percent is over, which means data number one, two, three. They will be allocating the memory scene uh, and the course based on just behaving right now. Once this job is over, all the information you can keep on monitor. So there's a job ID, you say this application number, one job ID is created. This job ID keep on monitor by your resource manager. Inside this resource manager, you have multiple tasks. This particular job ID, you have almost 201 tasks is available. All these 201 tasks keep on monitor and provide from data nodes. This is the example I'm trying to provide in the theory part. So sorry for the first theory. 
uh, because this is a basic architecture level. So you just compare with the practical concept now. Okay, are you able to follow me now? And I hope you are clear with the container and application master concept as well here, right? Yeah, so just one doubt here. So the memory used and memory available that we were seeing, hmm. uh, uh, was was it memory in the RAM or is it the like on hard disk? Memory is nothing but RAM only we are calling as memory, right? Storage we are not calling it. So storage, okay, so how, memory, but... how much it is available, that can keep on balance by your HDFS. So 50070, I think so. So we were discussing like container is about the uh, like data storage. It is not about the processing memory. And so uh, for storage, it is using RAM memory. That's what you're saying, right? No, RAM, yeah, correct. The container using the RAM memory only. Okay, but let's say uh, your RAM is 8 GB mm. and like we need more than 8 GB. Mm. Then what will it do at that time? It will create multiple tasks and run one by one. Okay. But that's okay. happening. So based on the data sizes, it's just designed and providing the blocks information, right? So how is going to be behaving? The cache output is going to be stored in storage. Okay. okay. Beyond the nothing. Somehow, somehow right. that's confusing because RAM is always used for processing and not for storing. So that's why I guess I confused okay. with it. Okay. So this is the entire overview. You can see this SDFS for our blocks. Three light rules is running now. Total capacity for my Hadoop cluster is 750 GB spaces because I have this much spaces available. Same like you, based on your system, it will be showing this much memory sizes, how much I use as of now. That information I can giving you. Inside to this Hadoop cluster, I just split up into multiple data nodes, right? Each 250 GB. So inside this 250 GB, 470 blocks I have used as of now, and the rest of them is have free spaces as available. So this 250 GB is a storage space. Understood. Each node have a storage space, 250 GB. This is not a memory space. Storage space. Okay, like this is hard disk. disk. Yeah, disk spaces, correct. Yeah. Memory, I have only 4 GB or 8 GB, whatever I allocate, that's a memory spaces. Inside yeah. to this memory basis only the container has created. Okay. 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 So, so the, the data container is using... the blocks. Yeah, the storage is the data stored. Hard of data is created, stored in multiple nodes, right? So that mm -hmm. data is going to be stored this places only with the uh, replication factor. So storage can okay. use only for the storage layer. Okay, it doesn't okay. affect any processes. Okay, okay. Uh, can you can you uh, go on that uh, UI where we are seeing for every node, uh, the memory used and memory available, like? Yeah, total memory yeah, is almost one. 2 GB. Yeah, so that was, I was asking, this memory used is from hard disk, right? This or is it from RAM? from RAM? RAM. We have created multiple containers here, right? Each of them separately running it. This is a RAM memory only. Each container, I just create this entire Hadoop cluster with the Docker basis. So each yeah, Docker I... will be creating a container. I almost am running 11 demons. Inside 11 yeah. demons, three of them is a data node basis. This data node basis, I just designing this memory and four. Understood? Okay. 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 <laughs> You can see total 9 GB maximum memory in this particular job and six courses mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. based on that, I'm going to run it. Okay. 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 So here it is showing like the, how the division of RAM is happening. And on the other UI, it was showing how the hard disk has been divided. Mm, yeah. This is a total storage. How much data I'm holding yeah. into okay. hard disk cluster, that information. Okay. 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 Yeah. Any other question guys? I'm just wondering, like, what do you call all these different UIs? Like, are there any names for these uh, UIs? And how do you remember them? Like, I was just wondering about that. What Maybe numbers? with experience. What uh, numbers? Like, no, no, like the local host or the port numbers that you are remembering. Just an experience, to be frank. I know almost uh, 12 to 13 and port, <laughs> mostly in the of predator and Spark predator and big data ecosystem mostly. <laughs> uh, 20 almost, but 15 mostly I remember and using it from there. Right? Yeah, like so that, that will come with number. experience. Mm. Yeah, okay. Because I have different, I have different, Spark have different, 
hydro cluster, yarn integrations, everything is a different different. So mm -hmm. 20 to 30 maximum is available. Mostly repeatedly we are using 10 to 15. Okay, okay. And all these port numbers are default port numbers, or you have changed them according to your so hydro two X and three X they have differences. Okay, okay. One X and two X is a common. Three X they have designed and modified. That's the reason just increased to more than 15. I remember now. Before it was only uh, the same static number is available. We can use it. Some concept is called FML issues as I have raised it. At the time, <laughs> they have changed the port numbers in Hadoop 3X. So <laughs> we have to remember Hadoop 3X in a different port numbers. OK, OK. OK, any other question, guys? OK, great. Then. Just the output for your MapReduce program. I have run it the MapReduce program. There are the data bytes just using it. This is the how much counter it just executed. What is the MapReduce program is working on it? And the shuffle output, there's a final output for you. The job has finished in 3 10 seconds. There's a time duration, you just provide. Don't waste your time. You will not be using this MapReduce in real time. Everything in the back end, you may be using MapReduce, but in the front end, everything goes with ecosystem basis. So I will show you that examples in some time. We will go with practical, right? And then I will show you all this one by one. Okay. So the people are confused to somewhere. So I'd like to share this information. You suppose I'm going to write the data as a put command basis. So I want to write the data. Okay, I don't want to confuse put command now. So write one GB. The name is called abc.txt. Okay, there's the file I would like to write now. This is the request I'm pausing to name node. Name node, what will do? It just allocate one GP of data. The file name is called abc.txt. This is I want to store into my data nodes. Name node have this information only. Uh, abc.txt. Whenever I'm going to call it, abc.txt is a primary based on the I just created. We call it. Name node can design and split this data into multiple places, like name, name node, node manager. Sorry, data node two have four blocks. The total, if you're going to divide by 128, it's just almost 128 to means eight blocks are just going to be created. So here, four blocks are going to be introduced. And the two blocks, I and mean, we short the name because we are seeing a lot of examples. Here, one block, a two block, and two block. Okay. Oh, sorry. Eight. Okay. Then fine. Only just three places, the data will be split. So this one GP at the abc.txt file, first of four block will be stored, almost 512 MB. Data will be stored in data node two itself. And uh, 256 MB of data will be stored in data node three. And uh, 256 bars is going to be stored in data node four. Like that, the data is going to be stored. Now the replication. By default, I'm passing 3x replication means this data replicate multiple places from here to somewhere. So this replication will be followed by this data will be replicate. One copy will be in this place, another copy in so this place. I like that name node. Uh, this two block will be replicated into data node four as well as data node three. Like that, this replication also will be replicated into this place as well as this place. Okay. Like that, the replication is going to be maintained. The blocks basis replication is going to be happen. Please make sure this replication will keep on monitor. The same data will not be repeat again onto the same data node. It should be replicated somewhere. Like that, it just introduced. It won't store the same data in the same places. Got it? Till now, is it clear? Yeah. This is the practical in real time. The, you are going to store the data. One in multi node, you can see this information. I will go with examples. I am going to write the data. Now, LS. Okay, I have some samples. ABC.txt, okay, fine. Okay, just uh, I have a question here. I have yes. one question. Yeah, please. Can you go back to the previous slide? Mm. So, if we have this uh, 1GB text file, right, divided mm -hmm. into blocks, 
then uh, I mean, I mean uh, how do they, why why not why why the data is not uh, distributed symmetrically between all the containers? Why the four uh, four blocks are in data node two? I mean, it be like one 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 each, something like that. Yeah, it may be created. The concept is called the input split. We will not be discuss that still. So during the concept, it just understand how the data is going to be stored. Something is available. Also, name node can decide based on your data node utilizations. How much data memory is already hold with the data node three or two? Everything can calculate right based on the ruling. Really name node can decide store the data inside. Example, at the beginning, you have only three node cluster, data node one, two, three is only available. Later, you're going to commissioning data node four and five. So almost data node one and two, one, two, three, almost 70% of 80% data is already stored. At the time, name node can give the priority with the data node four and five as much as. So such cases, data node two, four blocks, right? Same like uh, data node four or five holding the data with the four blocks or six blocks. And then the replication one block will be name node three, one block for name node two. The same four block will not be replicated to all other places. One block will be replicated to name node, data node three. One block will be replicated to data node four. One mm -hmm. block will be replicated to data node five. Something like also it will be replicated. Mm -hmm. So this calculation can be taken by your name node and it will be split up based on the core uh, sorry, node utilization. How much node you are, you, you are using, how much it utilized. Because if the same data is going to be stored in the same node, the particular data node will suffer a lot whenever you're going to submit the jobs. Am I right? So Correct. name node can decide and provide it. As an example basis, I just provide same like this. But in real time, it just calculates block report. Block report basis, it just split up and store it. Got it. Thank you. OK, I will show this data. This is the data, right? I would like to write the data into SDFS path. We'll see how it is speaking. SDFS command, this is the command, I can use it. Okay, so nothing is available. Let me go into push this data using put command. We will discuss the command in some time, so don't worry about it. As of now, we're just going to discuss the concept of basis. Okay, now the data is hold into these places. Okay, now it's available. Before it was not there, I just store it. I'd like to show this information with the browsing the files. You can see abc.txt. This is a file I have hold. I just write right now. This is followed by Total six bytes, very less data, so I just hold it. But three x replication just monitor and block size also I reduced based on your processing. By default is one twenty eight MB. Kindly ignore this one because I just designed this cluster based on our RAM and core minimum eight GB is available, right? Based on I have designed this block size and all. So this three x replication where this data stored that information I would like to bring up now. So I just open this one. I can see. So total this data only one block just stored and three data nodes is affected. If you're going to see this information, block zero. If suppose I use the data size is huge, I can see block one, block two, block three. Example, I'm going to store 256 GB of sorry, one GB of memory basis files. I'm going to store it. This data will be stored in multiple places. Is there any one GB file? So data, those airlines pockets. Almost this is more data, I guess. Okay, so there's more data set. Yeah, this data almost 1.3 GB, this is the data, surplus data we are using. Let me going to push this data into Hadoop cluster.
it will take some time because data size is huge. So meanwhile, this uh, processing is happening. Uh, I have one, one, one more question. Hmm. Uh, can you go to the uh, the page where we are, you were you were showing us the data distribution? So that information is coming from metadata only, right? And our yeah. name. Yes, yes. Yeah, only one block is showing. I yeah, cannot yeah. go in de detail depth information. That's the reason I just take a few size of data. So while while fetching this data, there is no role of uh, Yan, uh, resource manager there, right? A resource manager, only the job is submitted mm -hmm. as a query basis. At the time, only resource manager is going to be given. Apart from it, won't. So processing layer is a resource manager. Already I informed you on this one, right? Mm -hmm. Processing layer only, ecosystem basis, and Yarn basis, we are going to run it. And this place is only, it comes. So this is story layer. I'm trying to write the data into this data path. Mm -hmm. So when we are writing this information into the storage, right? So mm. still there, there is no use of yarn. I mean, while storing are... at the time, you don't require any yarn references. Okay, it's only for the running the tasks, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. If I'm going to read this data and do some process analysis, at the time, yarn will help us. While working with the Spark or Hive, I, at the time, I'll show you how yarn will be behaving in the backend. Uh, I'll submitting the job, right? Like some examples just before I run it and show you, right? This is a job is at the time Yarn is beginning. You can see some application is created, MapReduce application I type is introduced, submit the job in dev queue and running state. So that's a processing. I'm doing some processing. At the time, Yarn will enter into the picture. If no processing, just only the writing the data and down, Yarn will not get Sorry. Sorry. Now the data is right into the Hadoop cluster. So 1.22 GB is showing, let me refresh. So total size is 1.25 GB. And then it is right into Hadoop cluster right now. I just going to open it and we'll show all the information. This many blocks are introduced because block size I reduced into 16 MB. So it's just creating multiple blocks. For the example basis, I just create like this. Also based on your system capability. So you can see block ID 305, Pool ID, the, the pool ID references, generated stamp, and the total sizes is available. This data will be replicated into data in one, two, three. The three places is replicated. Here you can see another one block ID as well as block pool numbers and the reference uh, generation stamp and this block sizes and the data. As of now, I'm only using for three node cluster. So that's the reason it's just showing only the three node. Otherwise, what will happen? Data node one, two, and four. They don't know one, three, five, something like it will be showing. Um, I my, forgot to raise my five node cluster now. I actually I'm using with three node now. So only just showing only three replication places. Okay, so this is each block will be creating a separate block ID. This information is only uh, which is holding in your name node. This kind of data, whenever I'm going to call this file, this file having multiple blocks, almost how much block it just created, 80 blocks has created. This all 80 block information only name or folder. So when I'm going to call this file, all 80 blocks is going to be run at the same time based from this block ID references with your node manager. So during your processing layer only, as I informed you before, Yarn can take the responsibility and create a job and it's just going to sync together and running inside to your environment. Got it? Hope you are clear, right? Uh, in yeah. this practical manner because theoretically we can discuss a lot but in the practical while i'm writing the data it will come look like this only all the data have a unique block id numbers and where this data stored that information i can hold up if i am going to re reduce the block sizes i have already created with the uh, 3x replication by default i just created right now i would like to reduce the sizes from 3x to 2x i would like to re re reduce it so somebody asked the question, right? How to reduce the sizes or increase the you know, block size, replication size, and all. we can do it at one time. We'll see with the some samples now. Yes, BFS, BFS. iPhone set a rep. iPhone W, I just set to hashtag BFS, iPhone set rep. I think W only. I just go with the two X replication. Instead of three X, I would like to go with the three or two X replication. 
from the spot. The waiting time may be long for the number of replication because we're just trying to redu reduce the replication from 3x to 2x. So it's done now. Let me go into refresh the same page, or I can go and open separate because the concept places. Okay, you can see before it was 3x replication, now it just moved into 2x replication. Same 1.5 GT. Now let me go inside and check this one block ID. You can see. Availability one and two only. Before it was one to three. For example purpose, I just choosing it. Now these cases you can see one and three only available. So block eight stored either data node one and data node three. So based on that only, Yarn will be submit a job with data node three or one basis for to process this particular task. So based on the resource utilization, Spark sorry, Yarn can understand, and this task has to be run by a node manager of data node one or three only, either any one places, because this replication holding these two places as of now. Same like this replication block 22 replication, we just hold up in data node two and three only. Here only the job is going to be started. Understood? Before all the data is stored in all three nodes because the replication, now it is reduced into two eggs. So either two or three places, this particular block, so almost 80 blocks will be stored. All this information can hold by your node manager and whenever it's a name node, whenever it's required, the processing layer is raised, Yarn can create the job and submit the job into uh, the particular data node based on your blocks. Realities like this one in fact, okay? Got it? Yeah. Any question till now? So here we have changed the replication factor as a two. Yeah, I reduced into two x replication now, right? Yeah. So this is the one of the data. I just holding the data here. Okay, this is following with the two x replication. ABC dot txt by default I'm following with the three x replication. Okay. So here hyphen W, set of hyphen W source for the replication factor? Yeah, I would like to reduce this with the number of replication. Whatever before it was, I would like to reduce it. Okay. So this is for the particular job only, right? This setup. Particular files, particular data, yeah. because there's a kind of common basis. So particular yeah. folder basis and particular file basis, you can hold it. Yeah, now for entire process, if you want to change the replication factor, then? Then you can change your Hadoop config. Config file, okay. Yeah, and before creating the cluster itself, you have to set all the information. Because you are only choosing that by default replication, as well by default blocks as and all. So at the place you want to monitor, modify. Yeah, here, yeah, here some name node is affecting on that one, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you dynamically change the block block sizes? Uh, in possible, data possible. Mm -hmm. possible. Example, dynamically, no, dynamically means statically or asking manual no changes, right? Yeah. Yeah, possible. I will show the examples in the future because we will not be touched with the command still. So for the demons console basis, I'm just showing you everything. But if we have a chance, I will show you while we are going to practice that comments, right? I will show you that all the information. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. As of now, we are discussing the concept. So this is the concept is available. That's we are trying to fill up. So, so uh, any questions? Yeah, please. So uh, in this country, uh, in this cluster, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we have option like uh, uh, we can have one data node in, in different location and other other is in different location or is it necessary to have or have all the data nodes in the same physical location? Uh, I'm not getting your question. Come again. 
see uh, when we are creating this cluster right mm. so in real time uh, real time example right if say any companies uh, configuring con configuring their cluster right mm. so is it mandatory to have all the data nodes into some uh, same physical location in the same data center or mm. no it will be different data center also it can okay. be different data center. yeah only the vpn access will be split up and created the data center and the server basis actually the server is called uh, forget the server name what is the server name? raid basis uh, server we have to raid is basis server we have to maintain it there we can create and we have to create um, followed by vpc network so that you can create one of the data service uh, data nodes in data center one another one in, uh, data node in data center two something like you can create as you wish so that's concept is called uh, uh, in azure or AWS. they are calling so the region basis replications is it rs uh, lrs is it rs grs something has come so zone basis local basis and uh, data center basis region basis because better so while we are discussing with the Azure platform, I will show you the blob storage integration. How we you have to choose this thing. But the problem is that network will take in some time while you're executing your commands. Because your command has to be transferred via network and submit to the particular data center data nodes. Mm -hmm. Minimum latency, but it's possible. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, this uh... See, we, we have this uh, enterprise version of Hadoop, like uh, Cloud Era and Cassandra, right? Mm. Which what is more like in practice to buy this enterprise edition or to go for this uh, Apache Hadoop free uh, open source one? One everything is the same. Only they have built everything as a packages and they are sharing as a license based cost, right? Mm. So the Cloud Era or everything you have to pay for from charges. They only can use it. So same like we have introduced all the tools we have uh, sync together and create this kind of cluster, but it's uh, free of cost. Okay. okay and, I, and I missed the yesterday class. So did you explain the installation of this Hadoop and everything? No, it's already pre-built and we're providing you, right? You can use, just as an installation setup, I will give you, I will give you as a guidance. Don't worry. It should be run in your system as it is whatever I'm doing. I will give you that trust. Don't worry about it. Because everything already created as images. That image, I would like to show you how to deploy that all uh, in your system. And we will be going to work together. So I will show you that information. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Because you need to work more practice. So whatever I am giving the command, right? You are going to trial run. You are going to do in your system. So kind of dry runs. The commands and codes and files, tab, samples, everything I will give you. What you're going to do, just a plug and play and you can execute, that's it. Example, if I want to download the files, it's available. Just download the file and store it in local, just to download. Where's the download button? It just hold in my local system. Okay. So if suppose I want to read this data, Okay, so the sample course is available. Let me go into all this data. Example, I want to process something or practice something. I don't know what is the file it is. I want to run this Hadoop interaction itself. Okay, maybe it will be helpful for all future references. Just I'm going to push the data, just upload it, open it. So this is a previous batch reference of basics. This is all the demons we are going to discuss now. This demons only we are seeing practical one by one. We will not be touch up still. We just discuss only the first two of this things. We just discuss this one. We have other topics also available. Right? So already this is pre-built and created this nodes. You have a cluster, just upload it and open what it is. During go for the interview before itself, you just refresh all your topics with the queries and output within a few minutes and get ready. You don't want to run again. If required, you can run and test it again also. But uh, during your interview references, you can simply open and check it out. That's it. Like that, we have designed the entire. Understood? Mm. Yeah. So not only this, all the topics, high basis, high classes, integra integration, Python classes, Python and question related, yeah, something. All the topics we just created one by one here. 
So just upload here and run it. That's it. Automatically will be running it. Okay. I promise this environment will work in your system as I'm doing right now. Got it? Hmm. Okay. Tell now any question? Yeah, please. Scan by name node on this and it's uh, SNN both are same. Or? We can create standby name node separate as well as SNN separate. Second name node is called as a uh, backup nodes. It's just backupping the metadata information from name node to start an interval. Standby name node will be following with high availability. So okay. immediately, if you want to work together, then they will be creating one more node and they will be integrated with a name node all the times with the RAM memory itself. So that's called as an active node. Second name node is called as a passive node. Okay. So okay. passive node alternate name is a backup node. The standby name node is an active node. So it's a kind of admin related, but nobody is asking the questions with admin related as of now. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it much. You need to know internal process mostly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other question, guys? So here, any any tricky question may raise in this topic? Mostly, how to prepare the what is happening backend, how you are going to extract the data, what is the command? These all will come. So uh, high level architecture, they will be asked you, and each demons also they will be asked. What is the use of resource manager? What is the use of node manager? What is the use of yarn? Well, without yarn, how it is bigger? So why we need to introduce the yarn? That are all the questions they may be asking. And how where you are going to check the port data. So if suppose I'm going to load the data, where the data is going to store that questions they may be asked and uh, replications under. So we are going to seeing step by step mostly related to interview um, topics. Okay. And yeah. broadly, what is happening inside that you must know it. So we have uh, everyone know uh, how to press a cluster and name rotate and will be synced together. What is happening inside? So that's we have to know in practical way. Uh, that's the actual concept we are going to learn it. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other question? No. Okay, guys. Okay. Then we'll go for the next topics. So, name node, data node, node manager, task manager, resource manager, yarn, and how it is behave and how the replication is happening, what is container, what is application master. These are we just discussed. Okay. Now we are going to see internal depth with your name node integration, what's happening with the name node. So that's we are calling as a heartbeat blocks, block report, and all is available. Already we discussed what is block, what is happening. So block is nothing but you are writing the data, I just split and store into multiple blocks based on your default block sizes. While you are writing the data itself, you can choose how much block size I want to provide for this particular size. They either increase or decrease, I can, you can do it as your own. Also, replication of both. So, how to commence itself, I will show you in future. Uh, first, we will be concentrate on this, all the topic. Now, next, heartbeat. Heartbeat is nothing but name data node and name node will be communicate together right it is communicating based on some pulse so some network pulse keep on sent from your data node to name node so at the time it's just providing some signals so if signal doesn't receive from your name node then name node can consider this particular data node goes down or failure this signal name is called hot bits okay so each data node will send that uh, pulse information that each data node have own heartbeat. Okay. This communication layer. Okay, I can show like this. Maybe a little bit clear. Okay, so keep on sending that information to your name node. So name node then only consider this particular data node is alive. Otherwise, uh, name node cannot consider this block data node is failure. We have to replicate that part. What are the only one or two x replication? Immediately switch into multiple data nodes. So because sometimes what will happen? Some fault trust is going to be raised. 
based on network or storage memory basis or uh, uh, communication basis also. Sometimes data goes down or failure. Suppose the power issues happen, you cannot run your job, then the entire data node goes down immediately. So such cases you want to recover the data. Unfortunately, entire data node collapse or disk failures happen into the particular data node. How we are going to maintain the data? Everything can monitor by this heartbeat only. If heartbeat receive, this data node is active. If heartbeat doesn't receive, this data node is failed. Like that, name node can take the decision and submit that what are the blocks already hold up with the data node one that will be replicated into other data nodes. So entire data will be replicated that what are the failures has happened. Already we have one X replication somewhere, am I right? Because we are following the three X replication. So name node, data node two, three, four, all the places one copy we have already hold up. So balance will be replicated from internally and keep on maintaining the three of replications whenever failure has happened. Because data node one or two or three, any one of them has failed, we want to maintain our data for our business continuity. If we are losing our data, we are losing our business as well, right? Billions of transactions we are doing daily and billions of profit we are getting daily. If suppose we are missing it, then completely we are losing our data. So we have to maintain everything together. Okay, somebody asked something related in chat window. Just reach me in private chat or uh, already we are discussed. Okay, so just come to the WhatsApp. Okay, so this is called heartbeat. So we have some certain timeline, so certain intervals. Do anybody know what is the interval for heartbeat? How many seconds once or minutes once the data will be sent to your name node? The pulse. 12 seconds. Huh? 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other guess? Yeah, three seconds. Three is correct answer. Every three seconds once the data, uh, the pulse will be sent from data node to name node. Each data node will be sending it. Data node one sending uh, the pulse, I, uh, I'm active. It's a kind of present. That's it. So attendance basis is just providing that information to name node. So then only name node can consider, okay, this is the data node is active. Okay, we can proceed further options for operation with that particular data node. If this heartbeat doesn't receive within the timeline, then name node can take the decision. This is dead and inform to the admin team as a trigger basis and replicate the data to other places immediately. So it's a kind of high availability basis. It just start the process, this continuations. Got it? So it, after each th three seconds, it will send? Three, three, three seconds. Okay. Every three seconds. Yeah. Okay. So next, block report. Already we discussed block. So block report. So block report is nothing but each data node holding the data, right? So that information is a block report. This is the example we have noticed here. So this is the block information. This entire thing is called a block report. This will be sent from your day, each data node to name node. Each blocks will be identified and all the information will be synced with your data in name, whenever the data inserted is happening. Then only name node can understand the abc.txt file with one GP of data will be stored into data node one. And data node one have three X replication and this data will be replicated somewhere. I have a one more slide. The presentation slide is where it is, where it is, where it is. Where... Okay, I think so. Okay, so in this example, you can see this example name node holding the data, file name and all. So data node path is zero. This file following with the 2x replication, and this file, right, part one file following with the 3x replication. Okay, this term will be so part is zero following with 2x replication, part one, following with 3x replication. And you can see this information, block ID one, three will be followed. So one and three for part one files, or two, four, five for part one file. So part zero and part one file. Okay, like that the data is available. You can see this is a multiple data nodes is available. We can consider one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data nodes is running as of now. Example, we can compare it. So now you can see part zero, one and three, there's a block ID number. So 
So one and three. Okay, so this so this is the block ID one will be replicated in two x two x replication. These two phases will be replicated. Like another block ID three will be replicated into two x replication. So data node five and data node seven. Only two places available, right? No other places. Am I right? Are you able to follow me? Yeah, so block ID one is available. Data node one and three one. And no other places. You can see one. Like a block number, block ID three is available, data node five and seven, no other places. So such things, the replications are handling it here. Got it? Okay. Can you please once again? Hmm? Can you please once again repeat? I'm not understand this. Okay, maybe I will clear this one. I will go with the next one thing. So part one, there's a partition file one. We can consider name file as part one. Replication with 3x replication. This replication following with block ID 245. 245 block ID numbers. This is what we are seeing here. This is a block ID number, right? This block ID number, it's a top, it's a begin number we can see. But here we can see with some simple integers. So this block ID number, we can see with 245. So two block ID will be replicated three times, four block ID will be replicated three times, five block ID will be replicated into three places. So block number two, so data node one holding this block ID data, block data number two holding this data, and this three places, data node four. No other places the replications are happening, correct? Yeah. Same like block ID four. Block ID 4 will be replicated into again three, any of the data nodes. It should not replicate the same data node, it should be in different data nodes. No. So here is available, here it's available, here it's available. Got it? Yeah. So this kind of information, this file name and the number of replications and the block ID, what is the block ID I just told. So this information keep on will be sent from your data node to name node continuously this information only we are calling as a block reports all the data node will be sending that information to name node whenever the insertion is happening so this block report keep on maintaining by your name node whenever the request received name node only can can sorry can take the decision and assist to that particular job with this block id references this is the block id number this block id will be stored into data node two or three uh, data node one and two you can get to either any one of the places. Like that, this information will be feed into YARN. YARN will be start the process with resource manager immediately. Okay, this is happening. Understood? Each data node just generating yeah. a block related report and send to name node. That's it. One question. Yeah, please. So, what is the default size for the each part file? Part file is your actual file. You can create as you wish, right? I just holding or write the data ABCD with the six bytes only. Another one file I just go with as per my wish. I have two files I just writing here, right? So this is my own file, ABCD.txt is just a six bytes. Another one file, part if and or something, this file have holding almost 1.25 GP of data. This is my data file, so I, I don't have limitation. While I write this data, it just split into multiple blocks. So while splitting into multiple blocks, that will be keep on maintained by block IDs. This block yeah. ID will be the following by replications. My right. question is, my question is, the is the part file is equal to the block size or it will be a different? Part file is your own file. What you are going to write into Hadoop platform, right? That's a part file. Part one, you may be confused with the part name. You can see part iPhone zero, part iPhone one is a file name. See, I, hmm. yeah, while while generating the file by Hadoop, hmm. it will create multiple part file, right? From zero to n number. So yeah, while my, you are writing via processing MapReduce program, at the time you're just creating multiple files, correct? Correct, correct. So on that time. I wanted to know like is the each uh, part file size will be like a block size or it will be uh, something different concept it is followed by default block size because every processing layer you can modify it right 
while writing the data into your and from your Hadoop cluster. At the time, the processing layer high was for whatever you are trying to use to write the data, it is following by default block size and write the data inside. Okay, block size we cannot change it, but file size we can change it based on colors and repartition. The final output I'm going to receive into 5GB or 1GB, I can increase the number of file size with uh, based on reproduction sizes. So the file size is going to be increased to 1GB, 2GB, 3GB. While write the data into Hadoop cluster, just following blocks ID, block sizes, 128 MB basis. Are you able to follow me? Yeah, so part file is equal to while writing, it will be um, default block size. No, 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 you're a bit confusing now. We'll go with some different example. Okay, as you said, I have over 10 GP of data. If I'm going to process via uh, Spark or Hive, any ecosystem, I'm going to process it. My output, I'm going to write this output with 2 GB. This is my scenario. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay. Input is 10 GB I process I provided. Output I'm receiving as a 2 GB. This output I want to create as a partition file, as a part file. So how many part file I would like to create at one time? Two files, example I'm saying. Is it fine? Yeah. So one is yeah. part one, so part zero. Another one is part one. There's a file has to be generated. So this file almost 1 GB. This file almost 1 GB. Am I right? So next, this file, I want to store it. So this one GB, I want to split up by default block size. 128 MB basis, I'm going to split up. So at the time, it will be creating eight block IDs. This block ID will be following by data nodes, data node one, two, three, et cetera. Okay, this is blocks. So this part one file have hold one GP of data. This one, one GP of data block size space. 128 base, it just split into eight blocks, basically. This eight blocks will be stored into data one, two, three, four, and duplication also multiple places. This is happening. Same like another one file, part one, one GP, it will be split into this one GP with eight blocks and it will be split into multiple places. Are you able to follow me now? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, this is block reports. Where this 1 GB of data part 0 file has stored into the Hadoop cluster. What are the data node is involved to this particular job? And where the data will be replicated? All this information is called a block report. Okay? If suppose I'm going to change my process and I write the data into single file, then 2 GB of data. 2 GB will be creating 18, 16 blocks. All 16 blocks are creating as a block report and send from each data node itself. Because replication, the data will be replicated to multiple places. All will be provided from your data node to name node. That's called a block report. Clear? Okay. Uh, sir, uh, yeah. the block uh, will split into multiple parts based on the RAM size, right? Sir? Based on the RAM. Like one Not to based on the RAM, based on your file size and only blocks are created. Okay. Default 128 MB block size, right? So that okay. will be divided by 128 MB and created separate. Okay. okay. If example, I have one GB. One, mm. one GB divided by 128 in the same? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it will be eight blocks. So based on the RAM, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Based on the file size. Okay. Got it. Yeah, exactly the same. Till now, everyone is clear? Yeah, and this uh, block report yeah, will be yeah. sent on. This block report will be sent for only uh, newly created files or altered files or it, uh, or all the blocks information in a single uh, data node. What if suppose the particular data node failed and new data node is created? What will happen at the time? Because it's already created and replicated into somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So the block report will send that out. It will send continuously. Whatever the changes happen in your file, it will be keep on sending to your node. All kind of changes. 
You're going to delete the data. That is also block released. That information. You're going to change the data. You're moving the data from one place to another place. Everything keep on monitored by your blocks and uh, data nodes, and it will be generated as a block report and sent into name node. Because name node must know where this data is hold. What is the block ID for this? All the information get together and provide into uh, Yarn. Then only Yarn can take the uh, job executions. So while you are submitting your job, you, uh, you can see some of the resource utilizations and block references. It's just waiting for acceptor state, and then it will be running state. It just moved out. So in the back end, this always happen. Okay. Correct. Any other question? So we can customize depends on the requirement, right? Hmm. Yeah. The sizes you can reduce or your file sizes you can reduce based on the requirement and based on your code commands, it's just going to be modified. I will okay. show you in practical in our uh, hard spark session, right? I will show you that information. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. So just maybe one more question, sorry. Hmm. So like in Hadoop part file management and in uh, Spark, is it the same or is it different? Part file and Part file. See, in a in a Spark, we can reduce using some collects or some function, right? Mm. So here in Hadoop, also the same thing, or is it different to Hadoop, manage? Hadoop, we are discussing storage layer. Once the data enter into the Hadoop, how it is maintaining it? Okay. While you are reducing the, the file size and increasing the file size, is based on the output. How you are expecting your output? That's the processing layer. Don't confuse that into your story layer part. Here, everything we are going to work together with one center into the Hadoop data, how it is behave in the backend. Processing layer, Hive different, Spark different, and the other tools also behaving different. So that's a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. so suppose in Hadoop, talking about Hadoop. Mm. So I want to, after processing the file, I want to generate in single part file or two part file. So, same concept is like in both places or it is different? Hadoop, you cannot do it. How you are doing it, Hadoop? You, because you are writing the data, abc.txt file, you may be creating a separate two files and you can write two files at one uh, together. Like that, you can do it. You can see this file, right? I cannot split the file. This is the file I have. So 1.3 GP, uh, I have file directly I can write here. While writing itself, I can change my values as per my wish. The replication basis or block ID basis, I can do it. But I cannot split this file from 1.3 to 600, 500, something I cannot split up. If I can split up my own by manual, then I can write it. Everything I can handle in these places. Okay. This is the only place where had to come and you can do all the changes. Replication changes from, sorry, what is that, uh, hierarchy, ownership changes, or uh, what is that, uh, that uh, data changes, file name changes also, you can do it. But you cannot split the files more than two. If you want to write the data with multiple files, that will be taken care of by your processing layers. So you mean to say, mm. in a Hadoop, the part file is managed by the Hadoop itself, not mm. by us, okay. Mm. You have a, one more chance, it's called a merge concept. So Hadoop merge command is available. Based on that, you can join two files at once, like that you can do it. But it should be the same schema, same uh, data, uh, everything is created for not the same data. The schema and the internal that, uh, references, right? The block references, everything has to be same. Based on that, you can join together. At the time also, the command is going to be begin with your MapReduce program. So MapReduce program merge command is available based on you can join two files at once. Like this, this is while saving the file, right? Mm, by say two files already hold it. So part one, part zero. That I want to merge together and create a single file. So such commands we can use is give us merge file, it's a merge command basis. But it's look like a SDFS command, but in the back end it just behaves with your MapReduce program. Okay, also one more command is available, dist cp command. Dist cp command, if you have more than one cluster, you want to migrate the data from one node to another node, and with the number of files has to be reduced or increased, 
during the justice will become and you can do that but even though that is running via processing layer map produce program okay only map reviews will do the changes, but the this two command, this to CP and merge command is available as a SDFS command, but it became as a map reduce programming concept. Like it, just before I submit this job, right? The map bar and reduce have generated and running the job and provide the panel output. So in this case, the yarn will involve and the resource will be involved and process is going to start immediately. Got it? But you must need two nodes, at least two clusters. Same time, you have to create one more cluster and you want to see it together. Understood? That is all the admin part related topics. But uh, you are raising the question. I've tried to feed some information for you. Maybe it will help you in the future. Yeah, Intel may ask this question. That's why. <laughs> so mostly, data engineering, they will not ask the admin related question. That I'm sure. If anybody is asking, then well, let me know what their expectation first I know. <laughs> okay, shall we go to next? Okay, so till now we just discussed block report. Next, edit log, FS images, input split, and zookeeper. This is available. So we have 15 minutes. Okay, so edit log is very, very important. Edit log is nothing but do you have any idea what is edit log? What is edit log? Whatever the operation uh, done by the node, uh, uh, store in edit log. Any recent changes with your files have happened, that's called edit log. Okay, this is edit log also kind of block report only, but immediate recent changes will be sent back to your name because edit, you know, the changes for all the block will not be happening. Example, file name I'm going to change from ABC to ABCD dot txt something i'm going to change it this will immediately reflect to name node otherwise what will happen the metadata doesn't refresh you cannot find the file inside to your data node so this immediate changes can refresh with your name node so that immediate recent changes will be sent from your data node that's called as a edit log okay block report continuously sending a edit log whatever the blocks is going to be do the changes changes or five moved from one place to another place or something you're going to increase the replication or increase the replication all are file related changes that are all keep on monitor and send to continuously in your data node immediately it won't wait for a certain time interval immediately that information because i'm going to submit the job and it's running while I'm submitting the job the changes doesn't reflect it in how to cluster my job going to be failed so currently, I'm wasting my resource references. That's all I want to avoid. So such kind of help can monitor and help by your edit log. Edit log and block report both the same. And block report following by interval. Edit log will be following by your immediate changes. Only recent changes of particular blocks. Not all the block ID. So it's a minimum bytes of the data size. It has to be sent immediately to name node and refresh in metadata. That's a kind of acknowledgement. And next interval, the block report has generated the new changes information and send back to the name node and keep on monitoring and the update here. Okay, that's the use of edit logs. Next, FS images. FS images is nothing but your already informed secondary name node and name node. In case of name node goes down, at the time, secondary name node will be holding all the data already from the story just recovered. Also, the final failure is happened. Name node will send the data, whatever current cache output is stored, that metadata information in memory, that will be created as a snapshot because that's how the job submitted already. Few jobs is running, almost I have submit 10 jobs. That 10 job, what all the block ID referred, that information has sent it as a FS images and to send to secondary name node. While taking the in charge the second node as a primary, at the time, the first images will be duplicate and create as a file based caches and keep on support with your yarn without failing your jobs. And then only the rest of the block data so is going to be refreshed and created as a separate information as a metadata management basis. Okay, FS image only for your job supports. 
for business continuity and high availability basis. No job has to be failure in case of any uh, name node fail goes down. So second name node will take the in charge immediately and will support entirely to your particular job from the FS image references. That's happening. Okay. Plus one, one, your job is going to be run five hours. Four hours, 15 minutes, your name node goes down. Your job completely lost. Am I right? So we have to avoid that things via this FS images only. It's a kind of particular running job instances references that will be keep on monitoring. And then input split. Input split is nothing but while writing the data, how it is followed, how that mapper is going to be enhanced the data. While I'm going to write the data based on the blocks that I hope, it's not a problem. So in this case, of data node two, three, four, these are holding that ABC .ngb file. First of four blocks will be created, uh, so stored in data node itself. Second two blocks will be stored in data node three and so the rest of two blocks will be stored in data node four. So this first four blocks will be storing it, right? This first four blocks will be creating as a single mapper reference. With the same data nodes and the name node, node manager task will be generated. This task will be followed by your block sizes. So this block sizes, if I'm going to create, what will happen? Four tasks is going to be submitted at one time. So we have to avoid these things because we are spending our resources as well. So in this case, we can calculate these are all the sequence data we can create instead of four to one and we can execute. So based on that, the blocks will be generated from four blocks to one block as an input split. This one to input split is going to be run as a one mapper. In interview, they will be asked the question, number of mapper equal to number of input split. Okay, maybe theoretically I'm saying, I cannot show in the practical, I can go with some example. So four blocks will be generated into one input split. This number of input will be equal to number of mapper. Okay. So how many blocks, whether it is possible to create as a single block as input split or multiple input split. At runtime that the system can take the decision based on the input split only, number of mapper has to be generated and that way. So default block size 128 MB. Even though if it is a 512 MB, the 512 MB input split will be generated as a single job. So these cases, we will be releasing our core and resource memory spaces. Just to find to LMB container I have to create, or one twenty eight container I can create and submit all the job sequence manually directly. This will be taking care of your input splits. Okay, mostly processing layer following by input split references. Understood? Any question? This is very, very important. Can you explain this once again, please? Okay. Mm, input split, input split. Okay, for example, I have one GP of abc.txt file is available. Okay, let me consider this one. This file, what we can do, we are splitting into eight blocks here. I want to process it. I want to write some data. I want to process this data with a, it's simple, I want to count the data. That's my request, it just be saved. So what will happen as a client, I just requesting to count values, total count. Count request, I'm just to passing as a job. Name not can decide. abc.txt file will be stored, data not two, three, four. That information will be sent to, yeah, like a metadata information. Data not one, data not two, data not three, data not four. This is three places only. This abc.txt file is available and a block ID references. Data no one, block ID, uh, replications, and something. Okay, example I'm saying. Everything will be sent. It. Same like data node two, same like data node three, all will be sending it. Okay, once this information will be gathered, Yarn can take the decision. Okay, this is the data, data two and three and four only data is available. I want to submit our task to these three places and inform to resource manager, create a job to count the data from abc.txt file. And uh, this uh, data is going to be uh, run with the data node two, three places of node manager only. Like that, 
yarn will be command to resource manager resource manager creating the job number uh, job number is nothing but our application id here yeah, it's just creating the application id right this is our job number you can see application id is our resource manager creating as a job id here okay inside this job that job id 001 has created this job will be submit and it's just going to be communicate with the data on node manager 2 3 4 while enter into the yarn at the time it's called as a node manager and references while enter into the hadoop commands just at the time we have to call with the data nodes so node manager 2 3 4 these places only the blocks is available i have to start the process so four blocks is available four blocks means 512 mb of data is available so yarn can take the decision to submit the job this is the total size of the memories and data uh, file size is available the processing can use almost 512 mb or 1 gb something which is allocated while submitting the resource manager job will be created and task will be created here each of them so four blocks will be combined together and create as a single task because four is a sequence first four files will be stored into the same places so internally data node block scanner can calculate these are the sequence data and the repeated block ID, continuous block ID is available or different block ID as generated, something as going to be monitored. Three zero five, three zero six, you can monitor it. Continuous block ID because I just told only one. Three zero seven and next one, three zero eight. Like that, the sequence is continuously increased. So this right. data is stored here, right? So this information continues for first four sequence related to same data or not. That information already hold up with your name node metadata references. Based on that, name node manager can decide. This four blocks is a sequence based block ID references. We can create as a single task instead of four tasks. That decision will be taken care of by your node manager. That Four tasks to two, one task the conversion based on input split as generated. We, while starting the process, the, the job, the task will not be running based on block sizes. It just generated as an input split basis. So other than the four sequence block IDs, we can merge together and create a single file. So a single input split, single input split basis. Why I can create one mapper? This one mapper is going to be run in the back. Like that. Node manager three, node manager two or four also is going to be run for only one one task. So total three tasks is going to be run instead of eight tasks in this place. Understood? Yeah. This is happening inside. Any question, guys? Are you able to follow me now? Yeah, yes, yes. Just uh, don't hesitate. Ask me if you have any question. Since we are replicating the uh, since we are replicating the blocks, right? Mm -hmm. So how this uh, resource manager decide like which uh, from which name node data the block should be picked? Already name provide the metadata information. Here you can see these examples. No, no. I mean to say like. Uh, in data node two, right? We have four blocks. Mm. And suppose we have the replication factor of two. So mm. these four blocks should be like replicated in two other data nodes as well. Yeah, that is a chance. So that's the calculation will be taken by your name node. Because while write the data itself, name node only will be receiving the request. At the time, it's just calculated. What are the data node utilization and uh, which is free mostly and uh, where we can allocate. That will be taken care of by your name node. Oh. No, that's, the, okay. Mm. That, that's okay. That That's okay. So uh, mm. after after the replication, right? And mm. suppose we, uh, we are performing some operation on the, these four blocks. Mm. As we have all the, all these four blocks available on three data nodes, mm. how this resource manager will decide that these four blocks should be picked from which data node? I'm uh, the replication factor and all already Yarn will be provided based on network responsibility will be taken care. Okay, it's not directly with example, data node two already running two jobs. Almost 90% mm. memory is utilized. We cannot submit the job at the same place, right? It's already existing and running some job. At the time, mm. it will be thinking alternate. The same replication data where it is available. Mm. 
So at the time, whether I have to go with the four blocks or two block spaces, because the four blocks will be replicated into two block one place, so one two block another place. During the time, it will be create four tasks instead of three tasks. Based on resource utilization, it will be taking the uh, decisions. That will come into dynamic at runtime. Okay, that will be calculated and provide this information from your block scanner. Internally sync and provide each data node. It's how much resources available, how much it was utilized and how much we cannot use it as of now. So everything internally data node will be take the decision that's called intra data node concept. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. So internally yes. just take the decisions and providing it. Once the job will be accepted by your data node, then automatically will be run by your data node and provide the output. That's happening. Got it. Thank you. Hmm. Anything else? My dear, this is a repeating question. Hmm. The the data node two it has a, a default four blocks. So is it like the replication factor one should be reside replication on the same data node because hmm. of that? No, that is also will be discussed by your data node and name node. Name node will be provide this information. Eight blocks is available. Write this data to this three little section. Data node three, data node four, data node two. This three places, name node can decide. While writing itself, intra data node can calculate, right? At the time, you just understand I have already hold work. So, sir, please take this two blocks only I can take right now. So, four blocks you can assign to data node two. Like that, the request will be sent from your data node to name node. Name node can get the suggestion based on this recommendation, will allocate internally. So name node only can understand first where I have to store. What are all the data nodes have utilization? 80% data node one who already fell up. Data node five, almost 95% uh, data utilization fell up. Only three data nodes, data node two, three, four only have some spaces. That calculation will be done by your name node and will be submitting the job the data writing into that, this particular data node, each data node have some network IO. So based on the network IO, just take and providing this information, I have a slow network IO, I cannot read data faster, so I can hold up two blocks. And uh, I have a fast network IO, um, I can write the data, read the data very faster, I can hold four blocks. Like that, that internal communication is happening. That's between name node and data node will be taking care. It's an intra pool and intra data node concept is available. So that will be taking care how I'm going to write the data internally. Okay. Once writing the data itself, it will be creating something called CRC file. I cannot remember that what is the meaning for CRC. What is the Check redundancy. Check redundancy. Hmm? Check redundancy factor. Oh, check uh, uh, replication or something, uh, but it will come with a check only. So CRC file will be generated and acknowledge it. Okay, this data will be write successfully here. Like this, some acknowledgement will be sent from your data node to name node. So it's completely following with the name node and the data node communications. So here, here this architecture, name node and data node is the same machine or it is a different one? Dif different machines, different nodes only. Or each of them separate separate machines. It will be internally communicate with the network VPC basis. We have separate network. It will it will be communicate internally to that. We are creating a private IP public IP right like that. Just created and running it. Understood. Are you talking about this architecture? Or talking about our cluster. We have a cluster right. We are using the practice cluster. Yeah, right now the architecture you have given, it's, uh, it's I'm constantly. It's a different, different IP only, I'm sure. In real time, you'll be going to create a final cluster or tenor cluster, each of them creating a separate, separate mission. Each have own private IP address based on what you can call and access it. Like you're going to create this final cluster or cleaner cluster in a Hadoop or sorry, AWS Azure, you have to pay at most 5,000 rupees per week. Minimum I'm saying. Just a three node cluster, if you are going to create in AWS EMR with the less memory size of four core, eight GB RAM, something you're going to create, you minimum pay 5,000 per week. That I'm sure. Okay. Because we are doing some POC for API calls with the, uh, some AA development, we are paying that much money, that much payment. Okay. I got. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, why this architecture is for uh, Hadoop 3 or it is 2? This architecture you have given. This is Hadoop 2 only. Hadoop 2 and 3 is close to the same, only replication is going to be modified in 3. Okay, okay. so my, why I confuse this name node and data node is the same machine that is or it is a different one. That's why I'm asking. Name node and data node should be a different machine. It should not oh, be okay. same places. Yeah, 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 that is the... Mm -hmm. okay. So each of them separate. Uh, second name node separate mission. Yarn is a separate mission. Each of them is a separate node mission. So it's the run in the back. Okay. Each of them will be communicated together and continue that process, but it shall be a separate mission. If suppose name node and data node will be combined together, that's called as the total distributed standalone node. So in this case, as name node goes down, data also goes down. So until you're going to lose it. So it's a high complexity is going to be rising, but practice basis, they will be creating it. So you you maybe work with the VM basis. Some places the people will be sharing the DM plus created with the pseudo distribution. Pseudo distribution, you cannot see the replication of the block ID and all in detail. Only you can see only one replication data, how it is stored. That information only you can hold up. Got it? Okay. Anything else? Okay, fine. Yeah, any question? Dinesh, can you show real time edit log example? For what? For edit log. Edit log, real time example means simple. Okay. Immediately it will be uh, submitted. Okay. I have done the change part. If not, this file is available, right? I would like to change the file. DFS iPhone, it will be. My work. Okay, dot. I want to maintain the keep same extension. Okay. I have done it. Okay, here you can see the part is available. Now I just copy this one, create a new tab. My part that you see. I just going to open it. Same block ID numbers. It won't change it. Block 54 already I opened it. Same block 54. I just plan to open right now. So three five nine something is showing. Three five nine something. Same block ID, only file name has changed. This is immediately reflected into name now, right? So without any time interval, immediately just refreshed. This is the use of edit log. So if I'm going to submit my job and to keep on reading the data from this path. At the time, the file changes immediately will be reflect, and based on that, the job is continued right? without your failure. Understood? Yes, Dinesh, but do we have any changes in part file? What kind of changes you are asking? Um, the same thing will be uh, like any changes, cha uh, the name which changes in part file also. Is it the part file? This is the part file. Is it okay? Is it reflect? Okay. This is a part file, right? Before it was for different name. You can see the same file only I'm showing. Before it was part iPhone zero. Let me try to run the previous command. Now this file is changed into mypocket.gc. Before it was part iPhone zero. This changes immediately will be reflect now without delays, right? This will be taken care of by edit logs. The same block ID, same pool references. Same sizes is just hold the replication also maintain it. Only file name changes has happened. So only byte sizes because I have done the changes only the file name. It just changes the edit lock only with the byte level uh, file and immediately sync with your name node metadata. Okay, this is happening with the edit locks. Okay. Same size you can see this one. Same size, same time the job is created, the file is stored. Everything is the same time. Right. But um okay. If we change the file names, okay. Uh you are moving the file, you are removing which is oh, place from this place to another that's a moving file, or renaming it, or you are doing any changes with your file, immediately it's just going to be refreshed with your name node. That is the use of the edit file. Okay, but why the time information is not capturing here, even though we are 
changing the file names. We don't want to capture that information, right? Because the actual file, when it was inserted, that information, if you're going to copy and create a new file, at the time, new file time will be created. That is a insertion process. Okay, I just copy this one. SDFS, DFS, siphon, put, sorry, CP. This file, I would like to create as a new one. No, no, for new new one, okay, but for existing file, okay. This is the okay, not updated if, changes. If the time, uh, time also remains the same, even though we are changing the file names. It's an update process you are trying to do it. Update process, you are not work with your file, right? You If you are going to copy and create a new file, at the time update is happening. So such okay. cases, you can monitor it. Got it. Okay. It's not a database. Whatever okay. the changes CDC happen, you, 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 can, you can make it with your database, not here. Okay. Got it? Got it. Anything else, guys? Okay. So replica FS images, everything is discussed. Finally, zookeeper. Replication will be discussed, right? So zookeeper is nothing but the decision making. Who is going to be elected as the next level? That decisions is called as a that will be taken care of by your zookeeper only. Let us consider this is the entire is a kind of part of cluster. This is HDFS cluster. This is HDFS cluster. If any changes are known or failure and they don't failure, everything has to be monitored. This monitor can be taken care by your zookeeper only. Zookeeper is a quorum tier, something we can call it. Just to keep on monitoring what's going on inside to the data node, each D1 level, what's going on. Just a basic level references with the node level just taken care by your zookeeper. Okay, if any is not name node failure. Uh, so name node failures has happened. So zookeeper only can make the high alert and inform to their own association is called, uh, what is the association name? Eh? SDFS association, something is available. It is request to that association and choose the new leader. What is the name of this association? What is the name? I cannot remember the name. So, <clears throat> so my association is available Hadoop cluster itself. That association will choose and it will uh, immediately sync it. And the failures will be lead by associations only. Okay, oh, very long back, I just swap in this places. So this is will be choosing who is going to be to take the responsibility and keep on listening all the all the aggregation. So it's a kind of Supreme Court like that. So he only taking the decision in case of any uh, anything is going to happen immediately. Okay, so our uh, election commission we can consider like that. So just keep on monitor the notes references and all. Only primary references only, just keep on monitor by your zookeeper. This two is mostly. Okay, so in case of anything has happened, zookeeper will be taking the in charge and inform to that respective team and choose a secondary name node as a primary in case of name node failure. Because data node failure, name node can monitor based on the heartbeats, but name node failure, nobody can be monitoring. That will be taken care by your zookeeper. That's name is called uh, uh, ZKFC. Zookeeper failover controller, is it KFC, something they are calling it. Based on that, just take the decision. This node is going to be down. We can start our process with 
<coughs> secondary name node immediately to avoid our business losses. Like that, the zookeeper will be taking the responsibility. That's it. Just to monitoring process, the zookeeper can take in care apart from nothing. Understood? So zookeeper only monitor the name node, not the data node, right? Both only just monitor because data node keep on monitor by your name node, right? So name node will be acknowledged. What if suppose name node goes down? Who is going to be monitored? That will be taken care of by your zookeeper. Okay. okay. We can say it is a cluster management tool, zookeeper. Cluster manager that is also will be taken away or name node because name node have all the control, yarns and integration with the node manager, everything is having the internal controls. Am I right? Only name node we don't have a control, so name node control will be taken care by the zookeepers. So you can consider uh, data node one to five, everything is a kind of ministries. This ministries is controlled by prime ministers. Am I right? So prime minister will be controlled by another one who is called president. Zookeeper is a kind of president. We'll elect the next prime minister. That's it. Once he chooses, then keep on listening. He doesn't do anything by his own. Got it? Yeah. So there's a theoretical one. You know, we'll not be focused much with the zookeeper what's happening. So it's completely following by your admin teams. So what these are all things. ZKPC? ZKFC. Zookeeper yeah. Failover Controller. Zookeeper Failover Controller. That's a ZKFC name. Okay, then. Mm. Okay. Clear? Any yes, questions? Yes. I don't know. No. Okay. We haven't missed anything, all the topics, all the theories we have discussed only had a, the basics very, very theory because you must know what's happening inside. That's the reason I just taken much. So next onwards, we'll be go over the commands and Hive also architecture will be go in depth. After that, we'll be going with the commands. Okay. Got it. Any questions still now? No. Others? Are you going to share the class notes on the video, recorded video? Uh, it will be updated in the YouTube channel, don't worry. Thank you. This is the first day session, right? So I will share, send it in the YouTube channel. Oh, okay. okay. How can I get a cache to a file in HST first to compare later with the transfer to cloud? File in HST first to compare later with the Or I cannot understand your question. Can you elaborate a little more? Cache to a file in HST first to compare later. When it stored that information to compare with cloud or something? Somebody asked the question, but uh, the question is not elaborate itself. Okay, just explain private also, no problem. We will be discussed that information. Because while writing the file itself, you want to maintain how long the file is stored here and when it's going to be right into HDFS to cloud, at the time you will be getting the new file date information in your cloud label because it's a new object in your cloud. So it's a little bit different. So you can consider based on the file sizes as well as, uh, yeah, mostly file sizes and file name, you can compare it. The date ranges, the uh, time ranges, maybe help how long it will be stored in HDFS when it's moved into cloud. It completely, whenever you're going to write a new data, then it will be following that new time date time only. That's the default. Nobody can change it. But if you want to compare it, then you can use old time from your local Hadoop system and compare with the new time when it just insert into your local. Like that, based on file name and file size, you can compare it. It doesn't do the changes. Okay, somebody asked the question, how to find this uh, HDFS comparison between cloud uh, and the local, local HDFS. Okay, any other question? Uh, Dinesh. Mm. Yeah, yesterday I'm unable to join. Uh, uh, it's not all about uh, any sessions, right? 
no problem yesterday just a class discussion okay, okay. what is we are going to cover what is the syllabus topic okay that okay. will not be much useful to be frank i'm saying okay okay so Thanks. just giving the confidence to the people who are joining our session they okay. need to be very clear what's we are they okay. are going to get it from us that information okay. we just shared and uh, whatever they have doubts and clarification everything we just feed to them first okay. they okay. must reach to us with the confidence then only we can drive our sessions properly got it right got it. Got it. that's the reason yeah. we will not be uploading to youtube channel this yeah, okay. is I'll, I'll content basis. Definitely, yeah. it will be available in our YouTube channel. I will share this uh, link to you. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, link and today, link. it could be helpful for me to go through once again. Okay. I will share that yesterday link also. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay, thank I you will so upload much. it. But uh, thank you. I'm so sure much. just only the class references you are going to get from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just want to go to the, the no session. Problem. So No problem. No problem. I will upload both then. You can use it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, guys? No. How was that useful today's session? Good today's yeah, session. yeah, it was pretty good. Uh. Okay, fine. So still, we will not be entered into the Hadoop commands and all, and we'll go with uh, some practical manner. So we'll step by step. We'll go with the next three sessions. Okay. So till now, any questions, you can ask me. I'll share your feedbacks. Those are going to be continuing from the next week. This is a paid batch. This is only the feedback I'm saying. So if you are, would like to add any feedbacks or improvements, just suggest me. I would like to do that. Because your suggestions might help for our students. So appreciate it. Sure. Anything? Any feedbacks? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, and one more question. Uh, actually, I'm from automation testing uh, related to the uh, job. So mm -hmm. it could be helpful for me, right? So to change career or, or it, it, it could be implement for my work also, right? Yeah, no problem. You are already in testing means you are already attached with some development practice or more platforms. So you can easily switch into our and Robin, no issues with that. Okay, okay. That's easy. Okay, one of my friends. One of my friend, uh, he, he don't have basic knowledge also, but he want to change the career. So mm. I, I will push him to join here and I will send this link and all to him. So no problem. Just to share our link. Okay, whatever that today discussed, right? The demo, link, demo link just share to him. Take the decision by himself just to provide the reference. Those who are interested, they will automatically come to us. Got it. Got it. Mm. Okay, guys. Any other feedbacks or any improvements? Your session is going like this only, actually all your sessions. I just wanted to understand like how long will this program work? Yeah, three months to four months. Already I shared that information. Anyway, I will provide that details. So three to four months, the timing will be taken care of. This time you can get it. So first we will close it. Any question related to topic, anything you have, we can discuss. I will say just stop recording. Yeah, yeah. We can just stop recording. It's fine. Okay. So no question. I just stop it.